Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Uh, I need some life in my face, y'all. I need some life in my face. How's everybody doing today? Um, I woke up with like a scratchy, yucky throat, which is no bueno. Okay, and I just poked myself in the eye, which is, oh my God, that fucking hurt. Oh, I just poked myself in the eye with a finger full of makeup. Oh. Holy bajillies. Good morning. Good morning. Oh my God. Seriously, I poked myself directly in the eyeball with a finger full of makeup. That, that's going to leave a mark. Anyway, um, today is Bruce Springsteen's birthday, so shout out to my baby daddy for his birthday. My fellow freehold Libra. Bruce Springsteen. Um, anyway, um, I want like, I have the, a really cool, I think the young kids are calling them Shackets, which by the way, I think the name Shacket is dumb. I'm just going to tell you now. Um, but Shacket is what all the cool kids are calling it. Anyway, I have like a really cool shacket for my warm layer today. And I'm going to show it to you guys in a minute. But I have to tell you a really funny story. This may not be the best story for kids. Um, so if you have kids that are like elementary school age that can understand. Like obviously if you have a two-year-old, I think you're safe. But... Um, anyway, um, I found the love. So I have to tell you a funny story about how I told myself a lie so many times it became the truth. And I think it's really, really important that everybody remember that this is a lot of times, uh, trauma behavior. Um, Now, I'm not saying because I experienced trauma in my life, that's why I told myself this lie. I'm just saying that it is a learned behavior when you have experienced certain trauma. You tell yourself lies enough times that you actually start believing them. Right? Hi, Jen. Um, and uh, I... Um, I'm here. I have arrived at the moment that I can no longer run from the fact, missed you too, baby doll. Um, I can no longer run from the fact that I tell myself lies. Um, if I want to believe them. So what does that mean? Okay. So I'm not talking about the lies we tell ourselves when we're in dysfunctional relationships or abusive relationships or unhealthy relationships. And we say things like, Oh, if I lose 10 more pounds, he'll love me. Or, oh, if I do this. I'm not talking about those lies. I'm talking about like an actual lie. Like a lie that I told myself that like, anyway, let me get to the point. All right. So I have always sort of um, had a loophole in my life that I have never had a one night stand. Now... I've slept with people that I knew I was absolutely not going to start dating 
but I wouldn't call them one night stands in that I knew who they were, they were my friends, or they were someone like that I was introduced to by someone else or, you know, whatever. I wouldn't, you know, to me, a one night stand is like, I don't know you, you don't know me, we met somewhere, let's bone and never talk again. I ascertain that I have never had a one night stand. Now, I have always ascertained that and have felt pretty good about it. I don't know why, I'm like a, you know, I'm like a big kissing whore, I'll make out with anybody, I like men, I like women, I don't care. Like, I am certainly not the girl that's like, I waited till marriage to have sex. I think we all know that's not true. Um, especially if you read my book, you know that's not true. Um, but anyway, um, for some reason I held on to this narrative. I don't know why. It just was part of my story and it was like the one thing I thought I had going for me, which by the way, really Jamie, where is that taking you? Where is that little bit of information taking you, Jamie? You never had a one night stand? Great. Are you suddenly what? What are you? Superwoman? Bionic woman? Are you richer? Are you healthy? Like what? Nothing. Zero things. Zero of the things. Okay. So anyway, uh, this was part of my story. I don't know. So right. So I tell it. This is what I'm doing. Right? So I've even made lists of all the people that I've had sex with. And shout out to everybody else who's ever made a list of all the people they had sex with. Because I'll tell you what, it is really, really fun to play the game where you go back and you're like, oh, wait, remember that one guy I dated for like two weeks? Um, all right, listen, Fitzgerald Tammy with the, with the STD, we know. Everybody on here knows that Casual, unprotected sex is dangerous, okay? Please don't shout STD statistics at me. It's jarring and not relevant to my story. Anyway, so, um, okay. So anyway, I love making lists of people I've had sex with. I, I, I wouldn't say I ever get it completely right, but you know, I get close. But I have never had a one night stand, okay? So it's just a matter of like my memory. Can I actually remember all the boyfriends I had in college or like whatever? And the answer is, I don't freaking know, okay? I think I can, but here's the story, ready? So I get a Facebook friend request on my private Facebook page, which is very hard to find. And I don't want people finding it because I'm as public as I can possibly be. And I don't want people finding my private page so it's as hidden as I can make it. So I get a friend request from some person I've literally never met or seen in my life, okay? So I ignore it. Of course, because what? So, hold on. Hold on, guys. Oh my God, what am I trying to do right now? What the fudge am I trying to do right now? Does anybody want to come take this freaking thing out of my hand because I just do not have a fucking clue what I'm doing. Anyway. All right, you know what? I'm, I suck. So anyway, I get this friend request, right? And yeah, please don't look for my private Facebook page. I'm begging you not to. So, um, so anyway, I ignore it. Six months later, it goes away and it comes back. I'm like, who is this man? We have no mutual friends. Like, I don't know you. Why are you, why are you friending me? So I ignore it. 
I should have just declined it, but I just ignored it. A couple of weeks later, it goes away and it comes back. What do you have to say to me, sir? So I finally send him a message and I say, hey, not sure if you have the right person, but you keep sending me a friend request and we have no mutual friends and I don't think I, you know, I don't know you, right? So he's like, well, I wouldn't say you don't know me, but, and essentially he proceeds to tell me that we had sex um, in like 2002 um, after leaving a Hoboken bar called Tenth and Willow. So I'm like, I'm sorry, what? He's like, you don't remember me at all? I'm like, no, I don't even wreck it. What? No. He's like, do you remember going out on this night with these people and we met? And blah, blah. I'm like, no, I do not. I have no idea what you're talking about. And I think you might have the wrong person. In fact, what I said to him was, I have siblings and we look a lot alike. Is it possible you met one of my sisters? And he was like, Jamie, it was you and me. We went home after the bar. We had sex. I slept at your house. I got up in the morning and I left. Whatever. I told, you know, I asked for your number and you were like, no. And I was like, okay. He's like, I was young. I didn't care. And I left. And he's like, but I, you know, never forgot you. And I, you know, I, 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 uh, whatever. He's like, you know, I heard you were on a show and I heard you had a book and I read the book and it was super funny and whatever. I just wanted to say hi. And I'm like, I, I said, I wrote him back. I said, I, I really think you must have the wrong person because I have never had a one night stand. And he was like, well, you have, and it was me. And I'm not looking to go back and forth with you anymore because I'm not trying to like put you on the defense or upset you but I'm sorry if you've told yourself you never had a one night stand you did and I'm him and I was like is this possible is it possible that I lied to myself for so long that I believed my own lie to such a degree that I couldn't even recollect meeting this man. So I say to him, all right, I'm not trying to be funny, but is there like anything you remember about me or my house or anything that would like, and he's like, yeah, I remember that you went out because the boy you loved this is what got me. This is what got me, y'all. This is what got me. And I'm telling you, got me. This is what got me, y'all. This is, woo, Chile. He said, I, um, I remember that you were drinking heavily because the boy you loved broke up with you because you were Jewish. Y'all, I know exactly where the fuck I was the night the boy I loved broke up with me because I was Jewish. Which by the way, joke's on you, ex-boyfriend, because I'm Catholic now. And also, joke's on you because you didn't really break up with me because I was Jewish. You broke up with me because you were cheating on me with a girl from your office. And you weren't man enough to say you met someone else, so you pretended that you couldn't date a Jew, which is a fucking weird thing to say to somebody after a year of dating. But I digress. Anyway, he was absolutely right. There is no way he could have known that I went out like a banshee that night, determined 
to take my mind off the heartache I was experiencing. I had never been that hurt by someone up until that point. Um, and I was devastated when that guy broke up with me because I was Jewish. Fucking dumbest thing I ever heard in my life. Um, but anyway, I owed this man an apology. And I said to him, subconsciously, some, like now I know what you're talking about. I remember. And I blocked it out to such a degree and told myself such a lie that I believed it so wholeheartedly that somebody couldn't tell me shit. If you would have made a bet with me for $100 that I had a one night stand, I would have taken that bet and doubled down with you. I am telling you that I had fully blocked it out. I had told myself the lie so many times, it became the truth. So when people say to you, um, I honestly like legitimately didn't remember doing that to you in high school or saying that thing or doing that thing. There's a very good chance they don't remember it because the human mind has the ability to block out things that we don't want to remember if we have a good enough reason not to remember it. And apparently I had found it and certainly I would not by any stretch of the imagination, pretend that I forgot about this man's sex because his sex was so bad. That's not what it was. I blocked it out because I blocked out the entire experience, the whole night. Didn't, didn't they not exist to me? Um, and so I share that with you. Yes, Mar Marcy, exactly. Memory is a strange animal. And yes, Dana, it is good to ask ourselves, what lies am I loyal to? What have I done in my life? Who have I hurt in my life that I have conditioned myself to forget? Because let me tell you something. If I had had a one night stand and gotten pregnant and like went on to have a baby and like that baby was fucking 27 now or something, whatever it is and found this man and was like, we had sex, he would be like, what? No, we didn't. That doesn't make him a bad person. It really means like, what? No, we didn't. My husband cannot remember any, He, my husband has the ability to compartmentalize and forget things better than any human being I have ever, ever met. If you ask my husband the name of the first person he kissed, he will tell you he doesn't know. If you ask him the name of the first person he had sex with, he will probably tell you, I don't know. No, I wasn't so drunk, Karen. It wasn't the alcohol. Honestly, if it was, I would own that. No, I was drinking, but I was on a tear. I wanted to, I wanted to numb the pain. And I thought having sex with someone would really hurt that boyfriend. Yeah, clearly. But by the way, smaller world. And I'm really happy for that boyfriend now, by the way. Like, he has a beautiful family. And But I remember my sister comforting me and saying, when I found out he was cheating on me, she was like, it's not like he's going to marry her, Jamie. Guess what? Fast forward, he married her. And I'm actually happy. Again, I really am happy for her because... He, uh, he has a beautiful family. Um, anyway, I share that story with you to say that not all people who tell themselves lies do so to avoid, like, I wasn't trying to uh, purposefully deceive myself. I just told myself a lie and was so loyal to it that it became the truth. And I just, I think that we all have a tendency to do that when it is convenient for us. Um, so there's that. Um, anyway, I am really, guys, how come I only can lose things when I need to find them? 
Honestly, I only lose things when I need to find them. It is really annoying. I want to show you guys my shacket. Hold on. I found the love. This is pinker than I thought it was. Oh, Lord. Sorry, guys. Uh, yes, that is the Thrive mascara. All right, that's going to annoy me. Uh, okay. I have makeup up my nose. This is great. This is just great. Just tell your, tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. All right. So I want to show you the shacket. Stand by for the shacket. Okay, this is my shacket. It's like a shirt jacket. Um, and it's really comfortable. And that's um, all right. So now I'm going to go to work and go be great and fight off this cold. I don't like this cold at all. Um, thank you to everybody who ordered uh, tea towels yesterday on stateofstylejewelry.com. We sold out of another one of the... Um, <clears throat> we sold out of another one of the, um, you know towels and um, um, help me sell them all out guys it would be so great and you're helping a single mom and shout out to Mary who's helping me take uh, care of this um, organization and I love her thank you to Carrie for making these amazing towels um, you can go on stateofstylejewelry.com and get some double-sided decorative tea towels that I love you can get my hoops that are almost sold out you sold out one size the other size is almost sold out and the cross, sideways cross, will restock next week, which is very exciting. I love you guys so much. Have a great, great day.